This video is going to be the second in our Unit 5, and it is on graphing square root functions. Now our square root parent function is just y equals the square root of x. And please note it's not plus or minus, it's just y equals the positive square root of x. And here's what it looks like when you graph it in the calculator. Please remember your four home base points at 0, 0, and 1, 1, and 4, 2, and 9, 3 there. So remember for any y equals plus or minus a square root of x minus h and then plus k, just like when we did any other function, the plus or minus, if you have a negative in front, it's going to reflect it over the x-axis. The a will be your stretch or shrink. The h will be your horizontal shift, and remember it always goes opposite of what the sign is. And k is your vertical shift. All right, we're going to look at some examples. The instructions are to describe the transformations without using a calculator, and then graph it to see that you are correct. So our first example is f of x equals the square root of x minus two. So I'm gonna look at this, and I don't have a negative in front of it. I don't have a stretch or shrink. I don't have a vertical shift, but I do have a horizontal shift inside of the radical here. So it says x minus two. That means it's going to go two units, and since it's minus two, it's going to go to the right. So I'm going to say that this is going to shift right two. And then we can put that into the calculator and graph it and look at it. And we can see that each one of our home base points that we had before has shifted right two units. Instead of zero, zero, we now have two, zero. Instead of one, one, we now have three, one. Instead of four, two, we now have six, two. Right there. And instead of 9, 3, we now have 11, 3, which would be over here. So all of our x values, we've actually added 2 to all the home base points. So now all our points are looking like this. Okay, next example says y equals the square root of 1 and then plus 3. So I have negative, I don't have a stretch or shrink. I have a horizontal shift right here of 1 unit. h is 1. And I have a vertical shift right here of 3. k is 3. So based on that knowledge, I'm going to say that this is the parent function shifted right 1 unit and up 3. So now let's graph in the calculator and look at it. And here we have it. It has shifted right 1 and up 3. And we can look at the table. Take all of our home base points. And we're going to add 1 to all the x's, which I know is kind of strange because you're looking at it in the equation and saying, but it says minus 1. But really, we're going to add 1 because it's going right. We're going to add 1 to all the x's, so we'll have 0 plus 1 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2, and 4 plus 1 is 5, and 9 plus 1 is 10. And then we're going to add 3 to all the y's, so 0 plus 3 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 3 plus 3 is 6. You see we have a point at 1, 1 right there, and, I'm sorry, 1, 3 right there, and 2, 4, and 5, 5, and 10, 6, like that. Okay, our next example says f of x equals x to the 1 half power plus 4. And remember, one-half power is the exact same thing as saying the square root of x. When you put that in your calculator, you can either punch in square root of x, or you could do x and then the caret and then the one-half power um, if you wanted to. It'll give you the same graph either way. So I'm going to look at this, and I'm saying, okay, I don't have a negative. I don't have a stretch or shrink. I don't have anything with the x, so I don't have a horizontal shift either. All I have is a vertical shift of 4. And so here it is in the calculator, and we can see that each of our home base points, 0, 0, went up 4, and 1, 1 went up 4, and 4, 2 went up 4 units, and 9, 3 went up 4 units. So we just added 4 to all of our y values if you wanted to make a table. And one thing I did want to point out is when you put this in the calculator, make sure that you do a square root if you're going to use the square root symbol of x, and then make sure you get out of it before you hit plus 4 because that is going to be a different graph from this. 
So when you're typing it in, make sure that you stop, that you, you just hit the right arrow to get out of the radical um, before you type in the plus four, if it's going to be outside. And if it's going to be inside, that you don't hit that. Just make sure that you are paying attention to that when you're putting it in the calculator. Okay, next example, y equals, and then in parentheses, x plus 2, all raised to the 1 half power, and then minus 3. So when you put this in your calculator, make sure you use parentheses if you're going to be using raising it to the power. Or if you're going to turn it into a radical, the radical is going to go over the entire x plus 2. And then the minus 3 is going to be outside. So that tells you that this plus 2 on the inside is a horizontal shift. Remember, it always goes the opposite, so it's going to go left 2 units. And then this minus 3 afterwards is going to be a vertical shift down 3 units. And here it is in the calculator. Please note that each of our home base points, like 0, 0, went left 2 units and down 3. And 1, 1 went left 2 and down 3. And 4, 2 went left 2 and down 3. To 2 and negative 1. And 9, um... 9, 3, went left 2, and down 3, 2, 7, and 1, um, yeah, 1, no, 0, 7, 0, right there. Okay. Alright, in example 5, f of x equals negative, and then in parentheses, x plus 1 all raised to the 1 half power, and then plus 5. So this one has quite a few transformations. First, we have a negative right here, that's going to reflect it over the x-axis. We have a plus 1 in here, which is going to shift it horizontally to the left one unit. And then we have a plus 5 at the end, so that's going to shift it vertically up 5 units. And by the way, it's hard to write on this iPad with this stylus, so please forgive my horrible handwriting. So here's the graph. Um, you can look at each of the home base points, and you can, you can see, if you look here, that this was originally 0, 0 right here. And now it's been reflected, so instead of going over 1 and up 1, we've gone over 1 and down 1. And instead of going over 4 and up 2, we've gone over 4 and down 2. And then instead of going over 9 and up 3, we've gone over 9 and down 3, like that. So you can just count from the end point 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. And wherever it's been translated, you can always just look at the relationship between those points, and you can... Um, plot the points on the graph like that. If you wanted to look at this in the table, you would subtract 1 from all of your x values because you're shifting them all to the left 1 unit. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 4 minus 1 is 3, and 9 minus 1 is 8. And then to the y values, what you're going to do is first negate the y value and then add 5 to it. So if I negated 0, I would still have 0, and then add 5, you would have 5. If I negated 1, I would have negative 1, and then plus 5 would be 4. If I negated 2 and then added 5, I would have 5 minus 2 is 3. And negative 3 plus 5 is actually 2. And if you look, those are the points we've already plotted. Negative 1, 5, 0, 4, 3, 3, and 8, 2. And the last one I'll do with you guys is f of x equals negative square root of x minus 1. So we look here, this negative is going to reflect it over the x-axis. It's not going to have any horizontal shifts, but it will have a vertical shift down one unit. And by the way, please be reminded that it is very important to say it this way, reflects over the x-axis. Don't say just reflects because that could be y-axis or something else. Don't say flips. Don't say upside down. When you're writing this down, say reflects over the x-axis. And then you can say goes down one or moves down one or shifts down one. Um, but make sure you're saying reflects over the x-axis when you're, when you're talking about what the negative does. And here it is in the calculator. Our home base points in this table, we're going to take each of those points and we're not going to do anything to the x's. But to each of the y's, we're now going to have a negative y first and then take away 1. Make sure you do it in that order. So if we negate 0, it's still 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Sorry, I know that's kind of messy. 
but here's our new points. We have 0, negative 1 right there. We have 1, negative 2. We have 4, negative 3. And we have 9, negative 4. And you can see they're still in that same pattern that we had before. And I didn't actually do any stretches or shrinks here um, because we will talk about that again a little bit tomorrow. And finally, my math joke. Since you're at home watching this video and taking notes like you should be, make sure the last thing you write in your notes is the word snakes on a plane. And when I check your notes, I'll know for sure that you wrote the video or that you watched the video. Alright guys, see you tomorrow.